The biggest little hero to hit the toy shelves. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, Spyro the Dragon. The adventurous young dragon Spyro has returned. Based on the classic video games, Spyro is ready to travel the home world and save the day in action figure form. With plenty of articulation for great poses, you can relive all your favorite Spyro moments. To get this review underway, we're going to take the tape measure and we're going to measure from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail and stopping the tape measure right there. The length from here to here, Spiral stands, I guess, lengthwise 6.1 inches in height, which in centimeters, my friends and colleagues, you're looking at 15, 15.5 centimeters long. We're going to go ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to go ahead and get the measurements going for the top of the figure, of course, and to the very top of its horns. Stopping the tape measure right again. You're looking at the height of Spyro to be 6.3 inches in height, which again in centimeters, doing that right now quickly for you, 16.2 centimeters tall. As I thought this would be a fun comparison, one of the other video game themed characters that NECA Toys has released. There we go is of course Crash Bandicoot. Now this just so happens to be the one that we recently looked at. This is Crash in his scuba gear. And you can see how the figures stack up side by side. I hope the trend continues from NECA Toys to continue to release these sort of vintage uh, video game characters uh, from of course some of the video games we all know and love. Of course I've already had a look at that Crash Bandicoot. You haven't checked it out? Shame, 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 shame. Let's have a look though at Spyro the Dragon. This really one, this one caught me off guard, caught me by surprise. I wasn't really expecting NECA to ever release a Spyro the Dragon, or really for that matter, any company to release a Spyro the Dragon, even though, truthfully, while I did play Crash Bandicoot a fair bit when I was younger, I didn't really play a whole lot of Spyro. I might have played one or possibly two different games, two different titles for this little hero here. So I really don't know too much about Spyro the Dragon other than to tell you that the rendition that NECA has done here in plastic form is simply fantastic. This is certainly something that even though I don't know too much about the source material, probably not as much as somebody that plays Spyro the Dragon through its many different uh, title releases, I can certainly enjoy the marvel and the splendor that NECA has put into the sculpting right here. A bright, colorful dinosaur, of course, making up of mostly purples, with a lot of real nice highlighted yellows here as well, primarily in its stomach and, of course, in its wings. We'll talk about that in a second. Certainly, though, I want to spend some time, some much-needed time, to address the topic of his head, which is just an incredible specimen of sculpted plastic. I like the smile that they put on his face. He doesn't come with any other variation to this head sculpt, but I'm sure, much like Crash Bandicoot, we'll probably maybe possibly getting more than one Spyro. Certainly at what they've done and accomplished right here, I would hope that to be the case. There's lots of personality to be had in Spyro's face. I love the two-tone coloring that they put in the eyes, the darker purple violet there at the bottom, and that little reflection of light happening at the top corners there. Again, I love the smile. And the color variations in plastic, or at least the sculpting variations in plastic, kind of got these rigid, bumped, bumped texture happening at the very top of his head. And really, all, all across his body, he gets this scaled treatment. I love these sort of pebble-stoned larger areas in which they've done in a darker purple color. These little platelets, I guess, making up the majority of his body could be spikes they kind of actually just look like smoother stones again really adding some extra texturing to this guy he really has a lot of depth as depth i could probably describe for an action figure i think he is definitely one of the best recent outings from NECA toys and yet i so find myself frequently saying this i review one NECA toy and then i say this could very well be the toy of 2018 and then sure enough i review another toy from neca this could potentially be the toy for 2018 and yet i feel those same words bleh, slipping out of my mouth 
regurgitating themselves almost when I'm describing here Spyro. It's just a love this I love this figure so much it's just got some great coloring like I said it's got some great texturing to it um, so we looked at the head and of course sticking protruding their ways out from the top of the head are these giant horns done in yellow this mohawk of spikes this fin that's running down the middle section of his head sort of has a very shared similar yellow to that of the horns although you get this awesome airbrushing of this kind of warmer toned orange and yellow making up like the inner finned fanned areas here the coloring also carries and shares itself then with the wings wings are fully posable i'll talk about a little bit of the posability obviously in a second the yellowing as we've already certainly discussed runs down the stomach starting at the top area of the neck running itself down very generously around the belly section of spyro and then making its way off into its tail almost coming off into a like a coned shell like a seashell tip oh i love this figure now, he does have some problems talking about posability. Oh, well, before we do that, we can talk a little bit about the coloring there in its nails. As great as this figure does look, I do have a little bit of problem with him initially standing. It is sort of the same problem that I had sometimes when it came to, like, the Gremlins figures. The legs, certainly the hind legs, are posable. They can hinge back and forth. They're really, really tight legs to start off with. But I find, like, these feet, these back feet, never feel like they really firmly f sit flat. They're often, at times, sitting more on an angle than they are anything else. And I guess you could compensate for that by bringing the back section of the figure's well, it's back section down. Sort of can mimic almost a sitting pose. Again, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second as well, but it does seem like the feet don't sit completely firmly planted when you have it on a shelf. As you can see, kind of leaves a little bit of a gap. Mileage may certainly vary depending, again, how you get that back, that spine section. If you arch it a little bit, compensates for the fact that the feet don't sit completely flat. So let's have a look at this guy's posability. And he does have as much pose, he's as impressive really when it comes to his articulation as he is in the sculpt and the coloring of him. His head rotates all the way around, primarily, starting first and foremost, because it is on a ball joint. And it seems actually that it potentially could be, without me taking the head off, a double ball joint happening. Likely a ball joint here, and a ball joint here, right there. And that's allowing a very generous amount of posing that you can get the figure's head up, down, left right and technically all the way around he does also have a ball joint though it's not as much the generous amount of ball joint here happening in the neck you can kind of move the neck back and forth it feels like it does get a little stuck obviously when you are creaking the neck to the side it does break up the mold a little bit you forfeit the yellow now kind of shifting itself off to the shoulder section of one of its legs but it does hinge up and down. Uh, it does have a secondary ball joint, basically like mid-torso, mid-length. There's another ball joint right here that hinges back and forth, sways also side by side, side to side. And again, if you wanted to have Spyro sitting, you could kind of pull off that look by bringing the back section right here, this section here, just kind of arching it down. This is the impressive sight right here, is this multi-sectional tail. So you got a ball joint here, equally so here, ditto here, and yes, you guessed it also there as well. I tried to do my best to not say ball joint every single outing. It also seems as well the tail does rotate all the way around the conch corned section, the little uh, shelled area, the back spike of his tail also does have that posability as well. So it's like one, two, three, four, five. You just count it to five, just like that. The legs move back and forth. Both legs seem to have the hinging on the out. To bring these legs out. The back legs a little bit more stubborn than the ones on the front. The legs also, the feet rotate all the way around and they seem to be also on, yes, you guessed it, ball joints, both on the front and on the back. Funny enough, he only has pegs on the undersides of only the back feet instead of just the front and the back or none at all. These are the only ones that get the helping of uh, ball pegs or hold pegs on the bottom there. I don't really know why specifically they had to make that as the only section that has that has those holes are really on the back. I don't really know why they would have done that. 
but the wings hinge out. They give you almost... Now see, this is one little bit of reluctancy I have right here. The wings feel as if they bend down. And yet, while I'm doing that, there seems like there's something in there that's kind of telling me I shouldn't. It's bending, but it doesn't feel like it doesn't have as much the generous give to it. I guess just repeated use of this might likely be also for the fact that there's some visible paint in there that seems to have... It's natural that hinges right here, if they ever get painted, any bit of movement that you're going to be doing to it, that paint's going to be flaking off. Spiral actually is no exception here. Uh, the wings can also move back and forth. Back and forth, I should say. Back and forth this way. Uh, again, they get a little on the stuck side, I have to admit. Very reluctant. This one moves a little easier than this one right here. This one, this one really is, of the two wings, the one that seems more stubborn, like it doesn't want to do as much. And when something doesn't feel like it wants to do as much, leave it be. Don't play around with it. One other problem I have, unfortunately, one sad trade-off for the fact that you get fully painted wings like this, and the fact that you've got a hinge joint happening right here, you can probably already see what I'm about to mention. Yeah, it's this paint right here. Paint anywhere around this section here, basically where this sits inside that socket. When you rotate those wings in any way, shape, or form, any bit of that paint that's around that area here has already started to, to flake off and will continue to do so, like I said, every single time that you're going to be moving those wings back and forth. So FYI. Not really much more I can say about this figure other than I absolutely love it. Didn't play a whole much, whole but a uh, whole bit of Spyro when I was growing up. Like I said, maybe one or two titles. I seem to recall actually going to a friend's house where their younger brother uh, was playing Spyro the Dragon, and I sort of just adopted the gameplay partly from me playing the game myself, mostly though watching them play the game. I always thought Spyro was a neat enough looking character, and NECA Toys has really done a great job of capturing that essence, that playfulness of Spyro here in plastic form. Another NECA review in the books, and I find myself yet again uttering the words action figure of the year. This seems to happen way too frequently. It would be almost even easier for me to start compiling of a list of action figures from NECA toys that don't make action figure of the year. Between its coloring and the sculpt, Spyro here is a glorious specimen. It certainly can win me over, and I would hope that it also wins many other collectors over as well, for even people that didn't even follow the source material can find something enjoyable about this particular release. He's brightly colored, he's got lots of sculpting, certainly prose to him, and he's got tons of articulation. This would be a figure I think would be normally limited by, our, by its posability. NECA seems to do a very good job of kind of walking that line between a great sculpt and great articulation. And Spyro here is again a great example of that. Of course, there are some little hiccups when it comes to posing this guy. Primarily, it's really more so his back feet. They don't sit flat enough unless you sort of arch the back down, kind of like what I've done here in Final Looks. The other problem is of the wings paint, as good as it may be, the paint around the hinges, whenever you are moving the hinges back and forth on the wings, guaranteed, paint will flake off. It's inevitable. It's just sort of one of those things that you're going to have to accept. I certainly would hope that you would want to accept this one into your collection, because like I said, even if you don't know the source material in which you, these figures are based from, you got to admit, NECA, to NECA Toys has done a really good job on Spyro, and I'm really glad, really glad I was able to pick him up. This one's going to sit probably in the forefront. It probably is not going to stand next to, say, a Jason Voorhees, but it's definitely going to be paired alongside, like, my Crash Bandicoots that I've been reviewing from NECA Toys as well. Definitely would highly recommend picking this one up for yourself, even if you're not really into Spyro the Dragon. Just if you like dragon toys or dragon figures as a whole, or you really like colorful sculpted pieces, Spyro definitely should be number one contender for a new pickup if you haven't done so and you haven't picked them up already. Today we were having a look at the new NECA toys. This was Spyro the Dragon, an exquisite piece. Tell us what you really think, reviewer. The highly recommended picking this guy up and adding them to your collection. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other NECA reviews, don't worry, don't fear. There's a playlist for NECA toys. Also make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way. Probably not quite like this. I may say that, though, the next time we get a Spyro, uh, Spyro 
figure from NECA Toys. Maybe we will get more of these, sort of in the same way as we've gotten Crash Bandicoots. I can only hope, fingers crossed. Either way, though, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. More videos will be coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.